Hallelujah. Greetings, 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 saints, in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope I find you in the right place, in the right mindset. This is the day the Lord has made. We have every reason this morning to come in the presence of the Master with the heart of thanksgiving. I just want to welcome you one more time. Just to rejoice in the Lord, for He is the source of your strength. It's not what surrounds you that determines who you are. So this morning, I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for you. Tell somebody that we are here already. Church has just started. There's no any other time. There's no any other time. It's time. Church is now. Church just starts now. Greet somebody you find right on the platform and tell them, you know, you're welcome to be part of our service this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, saints, it's great to come in the presence of the master to know that this is the day that the Lord has made. But one thing before I even do anything, I know there are people who are just from the parts of the world, wherever I'm, you know what you're seeing us from and participating. Let me just say to those mothers, Happy Mother's Day is a blessed day for those who are in Africa and other parts of the world. It's a Happy Mother's Day. I thank God for you. You have always been beautiful every day. Every mother, whether you're a single mother, whether you're married, or whether you're a widow or a divorcee, you are still special. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for you this morning. As we are coming together, I just want to thank God for you. Let's just pray. Let us just pray to get ready just to hear the master this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all pray. Share with somebody this morning. Tell them, just remind them, don't forget church has just started. Just remind them some can be get, you know, caught up with situation, caught up with, you know, things in our homes, wherever we might be. But this morning, let me come to you and just thank God for you. Let me pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come to you this morning with a heart of thanksgiving for every individual who are find right now who are just on the wrong side of things where things are not going very well i pray for them that god you are opening almighty god new doors you are healing those who are sick father you are touching the heart that are broken father in the mighty name of jesus there could be somebody crying and grieving right now holy spirit this morning you're the only god who can touch where no man can not touch. this morning i thank you give us the right mindset to know that we keep trusting in you because you're jehovah the god we trust we stand upon in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen and amen uh, there's something we are coming up with this morning because we want to look at how god is seeing us in this moment because we're in a world today it's whatever has gone on there's so much that is keeping us to try and question ourselves and how we look ourselves and how we see things in this particular time but in this time i just want to come i've got this message that is going to help each one of us each one of us to understand how god see us other than how situation sees us in the name or how our surroundings see us if there's a lot we are all going to make sure we all understand this please i say tell somebody that church has just started there's no another time to see church to have started because we can only survive this time only through the word of God. I'm telling you, there's nothing else left in planet right now. It's not whatever is going on, but there's a God in heaven. So we've, I've got so much that I want you to, 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 to look at, that we're going to look today. My title of the message is like, God sees the best. God sees the best out of your weakness. God sees the best. We want to see how we see ourselves or how the world see us or how our next door neighbor or how our parents look at us or how is the environment look at us. But let me see because we see there's something we are going to look at right now. I love it because you see, you know, what makes it is we are finding it from the book of first, from the book of John chapter number four. We know about the woman at the well. We know the Samaritan woman, the woman of Samaria. We know this story. I'm coming to you to understand some of you are coming out with stuff today. Please, can you just say, I am ready. Pastor, I'm hungry. Bring it on. This is what we are going to see because we want to pick up something. I've got a couple of references that are all going to help us all to see how, how how god sees us against what people say around us 
in a world that has become is defiling and is judging and i'm telling you how how do we survive even as a board of christ as a church and then somebody says you're not my cup of tea and you're not my cup of tea this is what the english people say it's like you're not my cup of tea what do we do in a world when people don't see you like you are their cup of tea let us go and see because this is what's happening because do you know i'm looking at all this even during this pandemic i've seen something because for me you know we want to see how god has seen us through this time and through this season we are going to see this one because it, when the disciples saw some a woman jesus sitting with a woman they just got a little bit edgy because it was something that this woman is known for some other stuff but this this disciple saw something different but Jesus saw an opportunity that we want all of us to understand this morning. We want to see how we can turn our disadvantages as an opportunity for God to perform what he wants to perform through us. Let us see, because this is so profound message. I know it's going to help so many thousands and thousands of people. Please, it will be worth it if you can only share it with some people. Share with some people and tell them, do you know one thing? I never had such a kind of a revelation, because that's what it is. Because one thing, people are stuck because how they see each other, how they perceive things around them. Let us go and see, because right now, when the disciples saw a prostitute jesus saw an evangelist this is one thing when the disciples anybody who saw the woman at the well because they know he's a woman who had so many husbands no i can't say husband he has so many boyfriends but when jesus saw they didn't see a prostitute but the lord saw what he saw an opportunity an evangelist we are going to read quickly because we got a couple to cover let us go and see now um the same thing before we get there. I want to tell, even at the church today, I want to even encourage pastors, men and women of God, the same thing. Because so many of us would say our livelihoods have been damaged, have been taken away because of the corona. But let me tell you, even the church today and the world see the pandemic, the corona, but Jesus see hallelujah the harvest of soul children of god there's never been any time we feel that this time is the time when we need to look up and reach out the time we are because wherever we are confined is the time we want to change our mediocre into something else that is positive you can't leave there crying i wish this corona would go here yeah, we want it to go on because no one still want all this but still in while you are there how can you actually motivate yourself this is why jesus when he I was hungry and when he was weary let's see let's read let's read let's read john chapter number four verse number four up to I'll just quickly read very quickly so that at least you have the concept. We know this text. We know this scripture. It says, And he had to pass through Samaria. So they came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field of that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus wearied as he was from his journey. He was sitting beside the well. It was about six, the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus says to her, give me a drink. For, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that your jar, you are a, a, how, is it, how is it that you are a Jew? Ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria. The Jew have no dealings with the Samaritan. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, hallelujah, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked me, him, and he would have given you living waters. The woman said to him, Say, you have nothing. You have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than the fourth, our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, and he did, and his, he did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water 
will taste again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him, he will never taste again. And the water that I will give to him will become in him a spring of water, of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Say, give me this water so that I'm, I will not be thirsty and have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to him, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is is not your husband. What what you have said is true, the woman said to him. Say, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our father worshipped on this mountain, but you you know you are your our father worshipped on this mountain. Hallelujah. But you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour has come when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship that you do not know and worship what? Worship that you know. For salvation is from the Jews. But worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking for such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him should watch, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to, he, to Him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, when, when He came, He will tell us the truth. Jesus said to Him, I who speak to you am I, am He. So I thank God this morning for this message. I just want to bring to attention for something that we all know. If you go and read this whole text, we want all of us to understand and see what God can do, what God is able to do, and what God sees in us. One thing that I love because in this text message, it gives us on how we see ourselves because this woman is known in the seat of Samaria. She's known for whatever she's known for. Like just another harlot, a prostitute, that we find that this woman was what she was. The same with our own situation around us. There are other things other people see in us that is not what we are. But God sees an opportunity. Because one thing, if you continue to read, as soon as this conversation ended, it says the woman dropped the jar. Hallelujah. The jar that she had come to to fetch some water and ran back. To actually tell the people if you go on into say so this is one thing I want to draw something out of this message for each one of us today let me tell you that God is seeing you as an opportunity whatever he is whatever we are going through even during this time of the pandemic during this time we've been locked up almost nearly two years we are all stuck in our own confinement trying to think why and how on earth what is going on right now but one thing I want to bring to the church of God one thing I want to bring to our community one thing i want to bring into our lives god is seeing an opportunity in this season it's a time even men and women of god i know we have not opened our doors in the churches for too long we have never been having our normal church service we have we've never had any normal things that we could normally have but let me tell you and i'm coming to you this morning oh jesus have mercy this morning because this is the message to the people today i said when we are going what we are going through there's an opportunity where God won't show him so strong because now to me I see revival then I see what is going on because it has come to take us somewhere where we can sit and just ponder ourselves and say where are we going and what is going on the same with all what is going on up around the world today Jesus saw a woman which everyone else you know what she's known the name of this woman we are told it's just another Samaritan woman known for the city that's her name is not having an identity because identity is over because she's a woman for everyone in the city hallelujah she was the woman for the everyone in the city but there's something so profound about this that when God sees us 
how is he seeing you? When God sees your family, how is he seeing you? When God look at your marriage, how is he seeing? He's not seeing like a broken one. God is saying this is an opportunity to come and bring restoration. When you look at your body, yes, in pain, everything is aching. Everything is eating you. Everything. But what does, how does God see you? How does we perceive things before God? This is why I'm trying to bring up the mindset to see that today it is the day for somebody who is on the edge of some top and say, do you know one thing? There's nothing they know me about. They know me about begging because I can't have nothing. But let me tell you, when we say, when you are in the times when they say these things are not happening, so God they say, I'm here, Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I'm about to show myself strong in your life. We see something. We want to see because we, we've been labeled with so many things around in our lives. So many labels have come into our lives. I said there are so many labels. Some of us were su suffering from labels. Labels. We are walking under labels. Um, let me, before even I get there, let, I've got another reference. Um, today I'm bringing so much reference so that each one of you, you pick up also. We see God is going to use people that has never been thought they can be anybody. Hallelujah. I'm talking to some people here. If you are here, if you thought your history was bad enough, wait until you hear some stories. This woman has actually five husbands. How can you have a five husband? Is the only woman I has like, she's not, you know, even Jesus made it very nicely that, that you're not a prostitute. He said five husband. How do you, how do you take on five husbands? Jesus was trying to be polite with the woman. She did not, he did not even say, you prostitute. He said, you, you have five husbands. The other one you have right now is not yours. That means she had gone to take someone's husband. Hallelujah. So that is what we are actually here to. So this story of this woman would have not been a very uh, good, give us any other good ending where it could have gone. But we're still going to look into another one. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter number nine. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number nine. We want to see again another story we find because God is seeing an opportunity in you. He's seeing a, an evangelist in you. He's seeing a preacher. He's seeing a teacher. He's seeing a musician. He's seeing a present worship leader. He's seeing a counselor and elder. He's seeing a good dad. He's seeing a good mother. He's not seeing what people are actually telling you because the surrounding has really put its own labels. We are going to see. Let's see and see. Acts chapter number nine, verse number one, to, you know, it says, meanwhile, this is the conversion of soul because I want you to see what God can do. Hallelujah. There are so many evangelists today on this platform because you're going to see your position because you, you know what? Your situation cannot disposition you. Hallelujah. It can only reposition you. To die today, I'm just repositioning you. Let us go. And it says, verse number nine. Meanwhile, so was still breathing out murderous threats. You know, I love this breathing murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for a letter to the synagogue in Damascus. So that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly from the heaven flashed around him. He fell on the ground. I heard, this, I heard a voice say to him, Soul, soul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? Soul asked. Who are you, Lord? Soul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up, go into the city. You will be told what you must do. Then, Many then men traveling with soul stood there speechless. Hallelujah. They heard the sound but did not see anybody. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Oh, I love the scriptures because it's actually taking us to a point where we actually understanding. I said, he said, the Paul was breathing the murderous mindset. 
I know our story. God is seeing opportunities into the things that we thought people are saying, well, this is who we are. I said, how do you see yourself before God, not before your society? I know the society has neglected you, but a society has denied you. The society has labeled you. But one thing I'm saying, what? how do we see? I know the pandemic has come and ruffled and scratched and put things upside down. But how does God see us during the pandemic? How does God see during the corona and the COVID-19 time, how does he see us? God sees opportunity in every situation. I'm coming to some people to this morning. If you are there this morning, let me tell you, turn out your mindset. Turn out your thoughts of any other stuff that you are thinking. God has forsaken me. People have said this around me and the world is crumbling upon me. No, this is an opportunity to say, God, show me what do you want to do in this season? Because the people, we are doing wrong prayers when we are saying, I don't want to be in this. I don't want to be in that. No, it's not about you don't want to be in that stuff. It's what do you want me to do because this is what happened we see this as another another reference paul he was breathing his murderous mindset he was walking around as a murderer walking around as a murderer doing his business as do as you now asking letters he was authorized do you know there are other things we do that are actually authorized to do what we do but still when god says you've got my purpose he can turn your life hallelujah you know you can be known for the things yesterday you were doing so bad things but the lord is saying this morning i am turning your murderous mindset to be my evangelist. Let me tell you your situation. I know you are in pain, but the Lord is saying the blood of my son and the, the blood of my son Jesus is about to heal you right now. I'm telling you this morning, I'm talking to some people who are in the city. We are right in the other end of this stick where they are saying, what do I do? When this world world is telling me you are finished. Yes, you lost the plot. You should have done it this way. Yes, yesterday you failed. But your failing is not your label. Your failing is not your, how that you're feeling. Yes, it didn't work yesterday. You tried three times. It didn't work. But the Lord is still seeing a potential in you. Do I have people who are just saying to my same self, Yes, pastor, I, there's a potential in me. Yes, I said you failed yesterday. But here the Lord is saying, No, I can't. I can see a great woman in you. I can see a great man in you. I see an evangelist. I'm telling you, this woman of Samaria, she's known by five husbands. I'm telling you, but after just meeting Jesus, when Jesus sees you, he doesn't see you as a prostitute. He doesn't see you as a failing mother. He doesn't see you as a failing wife. He sees an opportunity of a great woman in you. Are you here? Are you here this morning where you're saying, thank you, Lord Jesus? Oh, I'm talking to some people this morning. Ah, it is. This is the best time I can feel that while we are feeling labeled, we are walking. Some of you have got a label on your forehead. Now you are starting to walk with your head down because you can't lift it because they know for who you are. You are a very, you did so much stuff. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, Jesus is seeing a great woman. Lift up your head this morning. Hallelujah. I said, lift up your head this morning. If you are here, lift up your head this morning because that day of the Lord is today because you are coming out of this portal and with a different mindset i'm saying you are coming out of this podcast you are coming out right now with your mind straight hallelujah with your brains in right place in the mighty name of jesus take away and shake off and say the lord i had an encounter because when you've got an encounter children of god where else and what else this morning coming to some people paul was breathing the murderous mindset yes all of us we had so much bad attitude bad mindset bad life li li you know living standard we've done so many things in our life when we feel sorry for ourselves and everything now we can't correct those things let me tell you this woman let me tell you, she went back to those five men she started with the five men that instead of them thinking the woman has come to do some stuff for some obvious business he said do you know what i met somebody I met somebody who has given me my true identity. I met somebody. You guys, you were abusing me, taking me just as a sex symbol. But right now, I found somebody who gave me right now my identity. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Because some of us, we've lost our identities as we walk. Life has given us such names and everything. We've lost our ministries because that's what we looked up to and say, now nah, I've lost members. Oh, I've lost my past. I've lost this. I've lost friendship. I've lost that. But let me come back to you. The Lord is saying, I'm seeing revival. 
Do you know for me, I'm just saying, I'm seeing revival in this season. And what I'm seeing right revival, because right now I've never reached people more than any other in my 10 years of ministry. Hallelujah. Then we are reaching out. Why? Because I saw the pandemic and the corona just as an opportunity to evangelize. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it has been good for anybody. No one liked the corona. No one, but whatever the Lord, that's why even in Romans chapter number 8, 28, he said, all things work out for good for them that love the Lord. When you love the Lord, that means all things are working out for good for you. Hallelujah. Please just say to yourself, all things are working out for good for me. Because somebody right now this morning, I said, I said, all things are working out for good for you. Yes, it's not working to, to you know for you but it's working through you because god is saying i'm about to change you my daughter i'm about to change my situation around you i said that this woman and paul paul not today let's look at paul the man we are saying in Acts chapter number nine i'm telling you this is a man who was a murderer he was breathing murdering murdering was his breath he was breathing murder you know doing bad stuff he was authorized, he was walking with the people that tells me how to do, arresting people who are in church. Hallelujah. But one thing I love about it, he is the one who wrote th two thirds of the whole New Testament. I'm telling you right now, you are the woman who's going to change the ministry. You are the woman who's going to change your house. You are the woman who are going to change the whole entire community because whatever the people labeled you, Jesus is seeing a potential in you. Please, I've come to talk to some people here. I've come to come to talk to some people this morning. I'm telling you, I feel so heavy. I feel so heavy. Pastors, let me tell you, it's no time to hide. It's no time to just feel like I wish we could. No, let's utilize the time because right now, it is the time to reach out. Reach out to your brother. Reach out to your sister. Reach out to anybody because the time for revival. You can't afford to sit down. You can't afford to sit down, woman of God. You can't afford to sit and say, I wish this corona could be gone. I'm telling you, don't think anything that is happening has got God by surprise. Nothing catches God by surprise. But the children of God, we are overwhelmed with the things of this world. Am I helping somebody this morning? Am I helping somebody? Please, it is the time. Please, I'm telling you, this message is for everybody. You can look for somebody to take right now because they are just on the verge of saying, I've been labeled that I'm a failure. You failed it. Yes, yes, we can't correct. You still carry the scars of what you did. But let me tell you, the woman had the scars of men that she slept with around, but she became the evangelist of Samaria. It's a city that did not have no dealings with the Jews, with anybody. But let me tell you, because when you meet Jesus, he bridges every differences. He takes you back into your enemy's camp and make things right. In the name of Jesus. This morning, I'm talking to some people who understand the job, you know, understand the real thing that God is at work in this season. Is it working this season to change your life, to change my life, to change our situation? to change our name and our identity. I know it has been labeled upon you. I know it has been labeled upon your children. But let me tell you, God is saying, princess and prince, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not looking good. It's not smelling good. But let me tell you, your smelling stuff is going to be a just another sweet aroma. God can change that stinking stuff into sweet aroma. That's what happened. This woman did not have an identity that gave her really much dignity. The same with Paul right now. You know one thing, he was a murderer, but only just one journey, one day. Let me tell you, this could be your day for somebody who's saying, I've been doing these things, but I don't know how, but there's an encounter. I brought this one as an encounter. You are having your sudden moment. There was a sudden flush. There's a sudden flush coming into your house. You are going to see your body starting to be revitalized. You are going to see just peace starting to leap inside of you. You are starting to see the peace of your mind starting to leap. I know you've been not sleeping all these days. Sleeping in so many hours is not your portion. You know, you are known for all these other things. But today the Lord is seeing a dreamer. Instead of having no sleep, you are an intercessor. Instead of no sleep, you are a good visioner, a dreamer in the name of Jesus. Please don't let, don't stop dreaming. Don't stop dreaming for whatever they've told you. Because when people said, but this woman, she was going into this world every day. It was a world that could not give them. I'm telling you, you are battling the thing that is not giving you satisfaction. But this morning, I bring it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, I'm coming just to people who just done some stuff. We, 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 we continue to look at stuff here. Let's go and continue to look at some. We all understand even about another woman we find in the Bible. Even Jesus himself, 
Hallelujah. He's, I'm, I'm telling you, he, 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 he's come through that lineage. Let's see. We'll see. Matthew chapter number 21, verse 31. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. There's a story behind that if you go and read, because we are in a world where people are judging people. People are pointing people and telling you that you are just, you know, look at you. Do you think you deserve this? Do you think you are that? And people have even stopped even worshiping God because they even church folks, because the people who are dangerous are church folks. Be careful of church folks. They are very good in telling you who, what you've done very wrong or very right. Be careful of church folks because this is why Jesus has come to labor because he said, you people who sit in church and trying to sit on judgment seats, trying to tell people that you are this, you are that. I'm sorry for you because you are going to see purchased going to heaven than you missing heaven. That's why he said harlots. Harlots are prostitutes. Hallelujah. He said it, harlots and all the other people are going to heaven. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the publicans and other people who are just there because this is what happened. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Because the disciples, they were very good judging. Thank God because it was not like a very, com you know, a, com a commotion when Jesus sat with the woman. That's why he sent them. He sent them to go and buy. Have you ever noticed that when you want to do your dealings, you know, we, we are grown up. Some of you, do you understand? If you want to do your things and you know that there are kids around, you send them to the shop to buy lollipops, uh -huh. just to go and buy some ice cream. Mom and dad want to do some stuff. Have you ever noticed that? We, we've all done that. Jesus said, no. This story, if I sit with this woman, with the disciples around me, having known the history of this woman, these people who just think otherwise. Jesus is trying to catch up with his... Why is he talking to a hooker? Why is he talking to a hooker? Is he hooking up? What is he up to? Everyone would have questioned Jesus because Jesus was confronting what people saw just as dirty and he could see an opportunity in it. Ah, I'm, I'm helping somebody this morning. Anybody who could see Jesus sitting with this hooker and I'm telling you who would have just judged that Jesus has been having fornication. Ah, you're sitting, sitting with a harlot. But let me tell you, Jesus saw it. That's why he sent the boys to go and buy food. You know, you don't want to be one of those people God cannot trust. Because we have got a people right now, a community, we have got a people, right now, a church that is full of people judging. They, they put on really good lens of glasses that can look from every angle and they can see you with every magnifying glass of what you do in day out. But Jesus sees and say, wow, I see an opportunity. I'm talking to some people this morning. Are you one of them and say, I'm he is an evangelist. Just please write your profession right now because that's what you're going to be and say, I find myself as an evangelist. What I failed, I'm telling you, is going to put me on the forefront. Hallelujah. Just shout to yourself. What, what, what I failed, hallelujah, is going to put me on my forefront because this is what happened. He failed what took her on the forefront. She became the first evangelist to meet up with Jesus in the city of Samaria. This is a city that was cut off. It was cut off. It was a cut off. Let me tell you, there are places that you have really a cut off that nothing goes there and nothing comes the other side. He said, we did not have any dealing. This woman has grown up knowing that there is no dealing between the two cities. But God has said, I've come to bridge the cities. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at this woman. I love one thing about this woman because she was very historical. This somebody who carried history. Because said, you know what? And one thing, let me tell you about our story. Because this well is um, our granddad. You see, have you ever noticed that you break with your own story? You break with your own history. This woman stands with her own story to defend her city. I know we are all here. We can defend what we defend around us. This girl start to defend and say, Ah, you saw a granddad Jacob left it. So even children and children, generation and generation. But he said, Yeah, there's nothing wrong about granddad's swell. But granddad's swell is cursed. Have you ever noticed that as much as he's cursed, God is saying, I'm come. I've just come to give you something better. I'm telling you right now, yes, you've been drinking from granddad's swell. I'm telling you, grandchildren, grandchildren, this is the same well Diana was raped. So this has got no good story. This, you know, saying when you go back to the good book of Genesis, we find that Diana was raped right at the same well. This is this woman some years down the line. They're still drinking on the same well. It's a cursed. We've been living a cursed life where people are saying this family is cursed. Have you ever noticed that you walk in the village, they know that oh, this family is cursed. 
You are a cursed family. But Jesus is saying, no, I'm going to take you, turn your curse into your blessing. I'm going to change your curse into your blessing. Hallelujah. I'm trying to turn your failings into your forefront message in the mighty. I'm having people here who are saying, yes, today I am just here, Pastor John. I'm, at, I'm just here. Just talk to me. Talk to me. This is real. Because you are the evangelist right now who is bringing that intercessory system in the house. You bring that prayer life in the house. This woman became the first evangelist. Paul became an evangelist. Hallelujah. 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 We are going again. We're going again because we want to go have scriptures again. We find in Hebrews chapter number, chapter 11, verse number 31. We want to see because there's something that we find. It's a reference and it's gone into the Hall of Famer in actually in the book that, that we find even in the book of Joshua. We all understand this story with the Joshua chapter number two. We all understand the Joshua chapter number two, but it's referred by the writer of Hebrews. Can you imagine? It's being helped that the, the writer of Hebrews took Joshua chapter number 2 as his reference. Let's see what he does. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 31 said, By faith the hallowed Rahab. <laughs> I thank God. I thank God when God come to change your identity from what people are saying over your family, over your children, over your whatever your life. Let me tell you, I've come to talk to some church. Uh, do we have church folks who feels like they've been disqualified by the comments of other people? You've been disqualified by the comment. People have said stuff that you can't even walk in any church. You can't walk and you don't want to see pastors. And you don't want to hear anything about the church thing. I've heard about these things. I don't want to hear nothing. But let me tell you, the Lord is saying, come on, my girl. Come on, my boy. You are the very person I want to use. You are the very person. Let me see. Let me see. By faith, the hallowed Rab, hallelujah, perished not with them that believe not. When she had received the spies with peace. You see, it's in the good works. It's in the good works. She was a prostitute. She was a prostitute, Harut. Rahab, the Harut. She's a prostitute. But what we find from the prostitute, what saved her was not what she was doing. What people were knowing her. He said she did not perish with the rest of the people. Because we've got some, some, you know, the danger of some religious people who call some holy, holy, you know what, people who just call them some holy, holy stuff and just say, you know what, they are like this. You know, they're like, you know, dropping with the anointing. They, they, then when they see you, they're like, mm, they, they smell this, they smell that. Where have they been? And they've been there, have been there. Uh, do you know them? Don't accept them. Or not, you know, even that, some churches right now, they tell you, if you're walking there as a single mother, they tell you, uh, no, no, no single mother, no single man, uh, no more this, no more that. Because this is the level you're walking with. And they tell you, because they've been some holy, because they think you've done some dumb stuff that you don't qualify no way. Uh, am I talking to some people here to this morning? Because I've come here to repair whatever the enemy has said over you. You're carrying scars of judging. You're carrying scars of brokenness that have come from mankind. Humans, humans, humans have become real. And the worst part are folks from church. Folks from church. Some of them, they are pastors. They've got good mouth to tell you that, you know what, you are dirty. You can't walk in my church. You're dirty. You can't be this. But let me tell you, you said the Rahab, the harlot, she was just a prostitute. And the only minute what, when, what she did was to open up the door. for the, okay. And people who saw her, because one thing I love about this whole story, when you read it from the book, I just love it. I just love it. Let me just quickly just see it in, the, in a way, just shortly. I understand. Let me see. I'm not going to read it because we all understand what she did this woman she opened the door when she opened the door what happened she just let this spies in yeah. hallelujah we had come to spy in, 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 in the city hallelujah we, we want to see because this is when salvation has come salvation has not come only to the pure it did not come only to the people who have got good background you know i heard people say you know what you know no in our family we are all been a good church background I just hate that statement. I don't like it because it disqualifies me because I've never been from that kind of a thing. Do you understand? It disqualified, already disqualified anybody who come from a broken family. 
Oh, I think I'm talking to some people this morning because each one of us think, well, I don't qualify. You know, no wonder I come from a, I don't care what broken family you are. This is another hollow tea. You think you are the hollow tea because you are the hollow tea because your mama was a hollow tea. You can in be, be a generation of a hollow tea. But let me tell you one good thing you do. Jesus sees an opportunity. Salvation comes. Ah, I'm loving the word of God. Do you know it makes me love the word of God? Makes me love the word of God. I'm trying to be very slow today so that you don't miss out this. I said I don't want you to miss out because it's a very profound message. Wherever you are participating from right now, let me tell you, child of God, let me tell you the Lord is about to do stuff that you've never seen. I don't care. The story, history is not really recommending you. It's not giving you any, any good resume. You've got no good reference. But your reference right now, God is changing it. Hallelujah. Your reference is being changed. Rahab the Haloti actually, actually housed the spies of God when he, she hired them she was served and the people who came to her house looking for that he said no we've seen men coming here because she was known for taking men in the house but this time she did not take she did not take the ordinary man she took jesus in hallelujah this time are you ready to entertain jesus let me tell you are you ready to entertain the gospel of jesus christ because this time she was entertaining other things and the woman at the well she was entertaining men going to fetch some water so that she can look good and pick up another man so uh, whatever she was about to do but this time she entertained the heaven i'm telling you you are now entertaining at the sound of my voice you are entertaining heaven things are starting to turn right now i'm telling you in the name of jesus your situation is going to have a turn around because what you are entertaining is salvation deliverance and healing yes you are in pain you are suffering but Jesus sees, let me say, because I don't want to miss out something here. We see in this right thing, the harlot of Jericho. We know this woman, this is the city, you know, when we talk about Jericho, the harlot in Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. We all understand this whole thing. It has got a story. Joshua is in the city after taking over from Uncle Moses. We now see, now he's taking his own leadership. Now he finds something in his time of reign of leadership. He finds something in his time of leadership. Children of God right now, there's something right now, there's something right now. I want to come to you. I'm saying this time, when Jesus, I'm telling you, we, I want to tell you this morning, I said while we are in this pandemic, while we are in this situation, while you're in a situation, just say, Lord, speak to me. Reveal it to me what are you saying instead of crying and say I, I want to come out of this god want to do something through your situation because you do you understand let me just go and give you some pointers because this is there's nothing much i can say that goes far other than just telling you what it is right now what we learn from this whole thing there are things that we want us to pick i'm going to actually give you some of these pointers point number one in this whole thing that what do god see in you what the world is saying otherwise let me just call number one jesus smith the woman at the samaria a prostitute and saw an opportunity hallelujah put that one on your platform and straight away jesus smith this woman when jesus you know what the disciples saw as a prostitute jesus saw an evangelist hallelujah hallelujah this morning i know something is about to happen i'm feeling it this morning i'm selling i'm just telling you i'm feeling it i'm seeing some people some singers i'm seeing some preachers i'm seeing some logistic members i'm seeing some elders right now people are saying Mm, what can they mount up to be? Hallelujah. Am I telling you somebody here? Jesus saw an evangelist woman. Hey, I said, woman, I'm telling you, just pick up yourself right now. I'm telling you, shake off what they've said. Shake off what the disciples have said. Shake off what your pastor said. Some of you, you can't get over what your previous husband said, what your previous wife said. You can't shake off all that kind of thing. No, you are not a failure. Hallelujah. satire. Number two. What the disciples saw as a messed up woman, Jesus saw a candidate in the kingdom of God. What the disciples saw as a messed up woman, number two, Jesus saw the candidate. Hallelujah. Ah, he's seeing candidates. What are you seeing around you that you can say, I can see a potential here. I can see a potential here. I love one thing. You know, I had someone preacher. I think some few days ago, one preacher was preaching, and I said, you must have copied my message, but his reference, I liked it. He said, another, you know what, 
people were sent with their bosses to go and, you know, it was a shoe company. I just gave it because I just heard it. It just came when I had my message already. So I followed that story. He said, and a boss took some people and say, he hired, he had a shoe company and said, okay, go and do the sales marketing. Then they went to a certain place and they saw everyone there don't have no shoes. So the two people who went over there, right? One of them said they were coming because there's representative who are going different ways. The other one came and say, there's no business in the island because no one has got no shoes. So there's no market. And the other one, he says, hmm, I saw definitely it's going to be like a hot cake because no one has ever put on his shoes. So someone sees the disadvantage and someone saw an opportunity. It's the same thing. We all understand. Do you understand even, even when we all understand the same book of Joshua? We understand when, when, you know, when Moses, actually people were said, go and actually spy Canaan. You understand when they met the boys at the Kanaki, you know, the boys, the big boys. And they send, they send the boys, you know what? Joshua and Caleb and the other guys. And they went up to spy Canaan. We still understand. When others are seeing the opposite, some are seeing a potential. Am I talking to people this morning? Am I talking to the real church folks who are saying, Pastor, this time you opened my eyes because every time I'm seeing negativity, please create a positivity right now because that's what God is saying. I can see an opportunity. Because when Caleb and Joshua came back to Moses and said, yeah, we, we saw the boys are big. But one thing we saw interesting, I brought this, I just brought what? I've just brought a little bit of some evidence of how the land is. The other one, they say the boys are big. So we are like grasshoppers, so which was okay. But the other boy said, no, for us, yes, it's real like that. But we are going to bring cluster pomegranate and grapes and these guys honestly the pomegranate uh, they were very big and the grapes were big but this other one they said hey but to eat that you need to clear the anak because anak is huge let me tell you what other set of boys said they are big boys we are like grasshopper some people say if this juice if they are as juicy as they are that means this the ground is rich let me tell you your breakthrough is what is against what people are saying is what is your disadvantage and your disability you are not disabled what you need to do is just create your uh, your inability as ability in the name of jesus can you just turn that thing flip it over whatever if they tell you you are ugly just say what a beautiful man you are what a beautiful woman am i just look up because this is what the world is doing it's telling us they can't see an opportunity in us they can't see nothing in us let us go. Number three, he says, when Je these are the things I'm giving. When Jesus saw Lazarus' grave, he saw the resurrection power made manifest. Ah, what do you see in your dead situation? This is why I'm always challenging people. I said, everything, because what is telling you, the situation looks dead. Yes, it looks dead. But can you not believe that when Jesus is in the picture, can you see it from the lens of Jesus' lens? Hallelujah. Let's see things from Jesus' point of view. Please, I know the world is not, inter is not, is not long a very good place. So many things are happening everywhere, elsewhere. From church point of view, political point of view, social, hallelujah, family point of view. But how? Are you seeing which lens are you using? Hallelujah. Because Jesus, when you've got Jesus, you see yourself. Jesus walked into the tomb, right? Just right toward the tomb. Of, he said, where is he? He said, he's over there. When he's, they pointed where he was, he said, you know what? I'm seeing resurrection here. Let me tell you, I'm seeing resurrection. What are you seeing around yourself, woman of God? What are you seeing yourself, girl? What are you seeing yourself, man of God? What are you seeing yourself around? Yes, it looks as a grave. There's a tombstone. And see, there's a tombstone. But how does Jesus see it? I tell you, yes, we are looking at the pandemic. Children of God, we have long stopped even just reading our Bibles because we thought Bibles are opened in the building. Please wake up this morning. Wake up, read your scripture. It's time right now for revival. The church, wake up, wake up, men and women of God. It's not the time to wait. Open up the building. God is not in the building. He's not in the building. He sees opportunity. 
This is time for revival. Do you know one thing about this? We've never been so busy. I was telling my wife, I said, I've never been so busy in my 10 years of ministry, full-time ministry. I've never been so busy like this because in, I'm working too hard. Honestly, I finish work 1 o'clock in the morning when I start 9. 1 o'clock in the evening, 1 a.m. from 9 to that's how I work. You know one thing? But I used not to work that way because it was the time when everything, everything, we just meet on a Sunday. But right now I see revival. Now I'm all over the whole world today. So we saw this as an opportunity. God say, my son, it's the time for revival. I still remember even when it was given prophetically in our church that, you know what, are we ready for revival? This is the revival time. What are you seeing yourself? How are you seeing yourself? Yes, the pandemic, it has taken our loved one. We are really crying every day. No one would have wanted to see losing families to all what is happening. But in the same manner, we all understand that this time, what is God talking to mankind? What is he talking to the church? What is he talking to the country, to the world we are today? Because we always wanted what we wanted, but we are not understanding what God wants of our lives. We have become a defensive system. We have actually created our defensive mechanism where everything is saying, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like you. This is not my portion. Uh -uh, uh -uh. So everything is, is not supposed to be your portion, but if something is to be your portion. Let me tell you, whatever you are going through, God is saying, I want to show myself through your situation. Because that's always, I always give my own reference. You know, when I got sick, it was an opportunity to see healing coming. Because I would have not said, don't, I don't want to be sick. Because I, did, I could not. I did not invite cancer to come to me. I didn't pray for it. And I've always seen it on TV. But when it come and sit on my body, I said, well... Healing is about to happen. I'm starting to unlock healing. Like, what do we see? Because I could see it from the lens of heaven. I'm seeing it from the lens of heaven. How are you seeing? Change your lens. Change your lens right now. Change your lens. Change your lens. How are you seeing things? Yes, it's really quite painful. Yes, it's really quite traumatizing. But change that into a positive mindset. Am I talking to real church folk here? Am I talking to real parents who are seeing my children are driving me mad? Yes, they're driving you mad. It's time to say, God, what can I pick from my children and say, these are the best children he ever gave me. Some of you have changed their names and to give them other names outside the realms of the spirit. And today they are even getting worse. Yes, they are not very pleasing. Yes, you don't have a pleasing dad. You don't have a pleasing mom. You don't have no nothing around you. But how are you seeing things from God's perspective? What is he about to do with your life, children of God? It is time, church of God, to wake up. Let's be positive. Jesus is seeing a great man in you. Jesus is seeing a great woman in you. Jesus is seeing a great businessman. He's seeing a great leader of time and season. You know, this is not time to just say, well, sit up, scratching our heads. What is going to be my future? What is going to be your future? Your future sits right where you are and say, God, show me right now. I'm ready, Lord. Take me where you want to take me. Yes, it's painful, but let me let me endure. Because he said, those who endure to the end, they shall celebrate. You need to endure because they say, you know what? Ah, trouble may last for a night. Hallelujah. Trouble may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That is book of Psalms 30, number 5. He said you might have the anger and the trouble for the night, but there is always a morning. How do we see our round surrounding? How are we seeing? Church folks, I'm talking to real church members. I'm talking to real church men and women of God. I'm really talking to your personal life. Yes, yes, you lived like a harlot. You lived like... Like you don't have no direction, but God has said, when I come, I come and give you direction. Ah, we are not told about this woman later that how she got married. But let me tell you, your, your destiny is not yet. Hallelujah. Your destiny, where you are is not your destination. Please shake off. You are only carrying just a little handbag. Just say, I'm just on a bus stop. I'm still carrying over. I'm still on transit. Tell the devil, yes, I'm in pain, but my healing is coming. Yes, I'm single, but I know my boy is coming. In the name of Jesus. Yes, they've labeled me like this. I've been a drug addict. But right now, I'm telling you, I'm clean in the name of Jesus. I'm going. I know my journey. Please don't sit and pick duvets on the bus stop. The problem we are having is I'm trying to help somebody. Is around my message. We are trying to have our, you know, create our residence, a place of just saying, 
I think I'm finished. And you put your bed and your mattress. And then you put duvets and stuff and sleep there. How are you, my sister? Just as usual, that has come our steam. I'm still surviving. You know, when you hear those kind of phone calls, you're like, God, please help me. I wish I was there and give them a little bit of a slap. Because uh, how are you? Uh, just as usual, as usual, that means it's like that's what it is. And it's not going to change. Am I talking to somebody this morning that, no, Jesus is not seeing you as usual. Because he said, my grace, you know what? My mess are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. You know what? His grace and mercy is new every morning. So great is the faithful God we have. Hallelujah. We grow from grace to grace. You are not stuck forever. Where you are, it's just a transition. This woman, whatever she was doing in Samaria, was transition. The same Paul was doing. Then the Lord saw any potential. I can see potentials right in the platform. That's why I'm here in your platform. That's why I'm here in your homes. Wherever you are at work, in the hospital, wherever you are, this morning, Morning. I say, I don't care how broken you are, but I can still see a gentleman. I see a gentleman. I see a wife material. I see a wife material. I see a husband material. It doesn't matter how many divorces you've been through. I don't, I don't care about it. I don't care how many men have been around you, but I don't care about it because what I see, I see a wife material. I see I see Jesus see a wife material. He see a husband material. He see a real child of God. He sees a banker. He sees a businessman. He sees because what you failed was only a put it was only to tell us you were trying something. Hallelujah. Because we got church folks who write, I don't want to go up because if you walk to the pub I'll smell beer, then I'll be like one of them. Uh uh, you don't have not to smell beer or smell cigarette or to smell anything. You know, that's why Jesus said, Be careful when you're trying to say you're trying to be smart smart when you're not smart because go check folks who walk like they're smart enough thank god this morning understand helping somebody helping somebody helping somebody jesus sees us as he sees us he doesn't see us as failures let me just round this message when jesus saw the hungry five thousand he saw a miracle in the supernatural provision Ah, uh -huh. you know, what are we seeing around us? Yes, you are bankrupts. Yes, your account is in minus. Yes, you are really running in reds. But if you look in the lens of Jesus, we, he, he saw 5,000. And Peter and all the rest were saying, P -p you know what? D you know, Pastor, Pastor Jesus, how can you send? Pastor Jesus, we want to send people away. And Pastor Jesus said, no, 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 we are not sending them. They are hungry. I preach long sermons. Sit, sit them down. And the Lord said, their hunger makes me feel like what else I see. I see an opportunity. Do you know, once we start to change our mindset and perception right now, children of God, we are doing, going to do exploits. Church, men and women of God right now. It's not the time actually to be backbiting, backbiting, hallelujah, gossiping and other things. It's time to see an opportunity. Like we see the walls on people on Facebook. Have you ever noticed that today it's becoming now a nuclear place where bombs and stuff are exploding? If you want to just go and mess about with everyone, just go on Facebook and post your soul. It become instead of evangelizing, what are you doing? We're supposed to be evangelizing. We're supposed to reach out. It's time to reach to the world. It's not the time to do hinehanas on the Facebook. It's a platform. It's an opportunity. Do you know people during this lockdowns and coronavirus, we have seen characters that we never thought we would. They got exposed. Jesus comes to expose those who thought were smart and expose them. That's what has come. And those who were like the disadvantage, he took them in. That's why I said in the book, Matthew, I tell you, we saw Matthew 21, 31. He said, you people who call yourself, you are going to miss out. I love it because that's why even the Bible says, those who are on the front shall be on the back. Those who are on the back shall be on the front. There's so many people today we are missing it. Let us read. It's time. How is Jesus seeing? So I've come to tell somebody who was sitting on a bus stop today, come out in the name of Jesus, as I'm going to pray for you. God saw a provision over 5,000 people who were hungry, children and other people to be added. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us will think we've got impediments. In our lives, you know what we call a handicap. Like what is God? God saw a leader in Moses, the stammerer. His impediment, oh hallelujah, to speak through to Pharaoh. 
He saw a leader. I'm seeing a leader. I'm seeing an elder. I'm seeing an leader. I'm seeing an advisor, a counselor. I'm seeing an intercessor. Yes, the story. You have got so much stuff that you cannot, you cannot quote the script. You can't do nothing. But I can see a great man in you. I can see a great woman in you. We are seeing leaders of tomorrow. Besides your yesterday, this Tamara became the leader of Egypt, of children of Israel to come out of Egypt. You're going, oh, 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 trying to talk, but he said, go to Pharaoh. How can you go to a king and talk when he's Tamar? But the two, two minutes before, you are hanged. But God said, I don't want the eloquent people. I'm sick and tired of people who come to me thinking they're smart enough. There were so many people in, 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 in Egypt that God would have used. He could have used anything. He could have used anything. I'm telling you, God is not a respect of persons. He's about to do what he's about to do. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 34. He's a respecter of no person. He's a respect of no person. God is about to use you. You are the very person I want you standing. Do what you should be doing. You are the best usher you can be. You are the best, best person worshiper you can be. You can be the best, best, best logistical person as you can. You can be the intercessor God is looking for, even from your yesterday, from your messed up life in Jesus' mighty name. The last one. He saw a miracle of the recovery of sight through blind Bartimaeus. I can go on. The list goes on and on. The list can go on and on, but this morning I've come to you. Your situation, you are sick. Am I talking to somebody? You are known by your doctor. You are known by your doctor. That this is who you are, that what you have been. Yes, you are known by people and say, you tell me that one. You are known for your singleness. You are known that you are a failure. You are known that you have left the house. You are known for this one. You are known for whatever. But this morning, oh hallelujah, children of God, your story is not good. But God is just going to change your story into your sermon. Hallelujah, your story is your sermon. Hallelujah, your story is your sermon. I tell you, it's a setup in your life. God has put this as a setup in the mighty name of Jesus. And if I help somebody this morning, I want Want you to wake up to the prayer and say, Pastor, this has been my day. I am feeling hot in my house right now because I thought I was a failure. I thought I lost my mind. I thought I lost everything because people have said so much stuff. But the Lord sees a great woman in you. In your weakness, that's why Corinthians says, in your weakness, my blood is made perfect. Let me tell you, because you don't have to come, you know what, it's clean. He just wants you as you are. Come to him as you are. Are you the child of God? You have given up along the line. You've given up along the road. The road was not smooth. You've been wounded. You've been wounded with stuff. But I've come to tell somebody, if you can lift up your hands right now, I'm going to pray for you before we do. Hallelujah. I will pray for somebody who is coming back again after they've lost the track. Hallelujah. Because of what people have said over you, about your yesterday. I'm praying for those people right now before I pray for everybody. Father, I'm coming to pray for somebody who is just coming today and happen to be here. Or even those who are always here but have not been in that place where they feel like they are connected. Because they're still having so much of what their story. But thank you for the encounter today. Thank you for this father, for the wells of their forefathers. Thank you because you've come to revisit their generational thing. They were struggling with generational stuff. But right now, I thank you, Lord, because they are seeing them so smart. Father, in everything, they are seeing them as winner, no more as failure. Because they've given themselves a sticker. They are walking with labels over their heads, over their back. Wherever they go, they can't move forward. They can't go anywhere. They are stuck. But right now, so God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Move them out right now from that dispositional place. I said, move them, Holy Spirit. Move out in the name of Jesus. Stand up right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Stand up in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Right now, your sickness is an opportunity for God to heal you right now in the name of Jesus. I tell you, your depression is the God to come and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch every dysfunctionality. Yes, right now. There's an opportunity of healing. Deliverance right now is coming. I said healing is coming to you right now. Just accept it and say, yes, touch your body. Touch where it is hurting and say, yes, I was taking these tablets, but I thank God now today, you, I'm seeing healing coming to me. 
So pain is just allowing healing to come. Recovery is coming. Yes, you are blind. Please just touch that eye and say, I'm feeling it. I know you are going to give your testimony. You might say, Pastor John, I've been to so many people, but I'm coming here this morning under the mighty anointing of God right now to speak into your situation. He's turning it around because we are seeing it from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. I've been waiting for too long for things that were stuck. God is saying, I'm breaking stuff right now. I don't care. It has been looking like what it is, but right now I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it right now because I see the power, the supernatural 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 be free in jesus mighty name father we thank and give you praise in jesus mighty name lord we give you praise and honor we are going actually to do our holy communion as you hold your bread right now we just all of want to cut together and drink as you hold hallelujah i want you to hold right now it's your recovery breakthrough today this one you are taking for their identity. Mm. This is how Jesus sees. Take it like, mm. Jesus, I'm taking this as your body. Yeah. I want to see things how you see me. Mm, Please, I know it's been hard to overcome. But if you're taking this today, I'm re-emphasizing. I said, take it. Saying, yes, I used to be that. But I'm now seeing what you see me. Not what the world see me. Because the world has labeled us, tarnished our names. Some of you can't walk, you can't do nothing. Walk around, that's your name. You are known for the few things you've done. But today, please, do it with a difference. This is not tradition. We don't take this for tradition. If it's tradition, don't take it. Because it will be nothing for you. But take it and say, my identity is changing. My identity is changing. I'm going to see myself what Jesus see me. Because you are seeing yourself in a wrong, wrong lens. Right now I pray. Father, as we are going to partake this morning. Everyone who is taking this morning, I give thanks unto you. Because this is going to change our DNA. For what people have said over us. Father, this is going to change our DNA. For what people have said over us. Father, I think for every individual right now, you are altering their DNA as they take. We break it, Father, in remembrance that you took all the pain. You took away the shame. Guilty. Hallelujah. You are taking away guilty. I'm no longer guilty. You are no longer guilty. We are no longer guilty when we partake. In Jesus' mighty name, let's partake. As we take the blood together, this is really going to rewrite and erase every record. Please, I know it's so hard. You're trying to get out of that thing. Please take it in a different today and say, Pastor, I've been taking it because you only do it every Sunday. But children of God, it changes all the trace of things that have happened. It's to give you peace of mind. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. I want you to have peace of mind right now. Let's all just thank God this. Father, I pray and give thanks. This blood gives a new covenant. We've been in the covenant of our uncles, Jacob. Generational things. Right now, known for being harlots, thieves, killers. But the blood has come here to recalibrate, level up the playing field. Right now, what, where there was no dealings are happening through the blood. We see Samaria having new dealings, new business opportunity. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus saw an opportunity. And you are seeing opportunity in us. Against the odds. Father, I thank you for the blood. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's all drink together. Just Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this service. I thank you for everyone who's been, Father, at the sound of my voice. And for some who are coming later down the line. Because of other commitment that could have our service together right time but holy spirit you are still speaking even out of the air you are still speaking holy spirit i thank you for healing them right now because in their pain and agony there's an opportunity of healing you are seeing them from the healing hand you are seeing them from a breakthrough hand those who are bound with any generational things those who are still under curses those who are bound with chains father we see broken chains 
Father, I thank you for your supernatural intervention, for changing our identities right now, this today. Father, you have healed so many families today that were known for not being good family. Children today who were given new nicknames, but God today, you have changed all that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I want to thank God for your life, child of God, for just being with us in Jesus' service. It's amazing. I felt the anointing. I felt the power of God moving like it has never moved. I'm telling you, you are testifying. 2021, during the pandemic, it's an opportunity. It's time. Revival has just started. Men and women of God, God bless you all. I wish you all the blessed, blessed Sunday. Hallelujah. After all this, share with somebody and say, this somebody, somebody needs, whether they are in the village, whether they are in prison, whether they are in hospital, say, God, see you as a healed person. See you from a convict. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To a preacher. Hallelujah. From a hallowed. Hallelujah. To an evangelist. God bless you. Let's us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit live and abide with us now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you children of God. You look beautiful. Hallelujah. Shalom.